Too much to talk about, too little time to talk about it, so we'll get right down to business. Just a quick note, we'll have a medical professional joining us between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. Some of the other things that we'll address. Hope to get a chance to talk a little later in the program. you got to mention this because if you don't say it right off the top, uh, then somebody always calls and says, Ah, oh, I got to shame. You haven't mentioned it. It's Pearl Harbor Day. You're dissing the American troops. As if I don't, you know, immediately mention it, that somehow uh, that that is a slap in the face or that if I don't mention it, then it would not have happened. Uh, but I'll I'll talk about that a little later. In fact, I just did my pregame video on the uh, subject about a dozen minutes long on the very very subject. And if you go to our website, newsradio1310.com, I've got a couple of short paragraphs up there about the memories of a neighbor who actually happened to be serving in the Navy that day at Pearl Harbor when all of this took took place. So uh, for those of you who think that I'm going to be shirking that, uh, it is coming. So And I've already made mention of it a couple of other places this morning. This is also for my friends who may be listening online uh, in the People's Republic of Delaware this morning, where I used to work. This is Delaware Day. It's also the day uh, that 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 state was the first in the nation to ratify the Constitution. Uh, We're a long way from what those founders envisioned, obviously, especially in that state. Coming up on 8 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. A bit warmer to start the day than yesterday. I said yesterday it was colder than both Jill Stein and Hillary Clinton combined. So today, probably just Hillary Clinton. Uh, for those of you who uh, who think that that might be a little bit, I don't know, misogynistic, I don't care. And we'll leave it at that. Got to open the show today talking about a subject that has been on the lips of everyone around here for the last couple of years, and that is refugee resettlement, and which also goes hand in hand with any immigration and uh, the number of people that are coming to the United States. This is from Media Research Center. I happened to come across this while I was getting some work together for the program today. I wanted to share this before I actually share a couple of sound clips with you that I think are important to hear as well. Uh, A writer says, CNN report again used a misleading edit clip of, edited clip that is, of incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, which made it look like the general was calling all of Islam a cancer which he did not, by the way, but it's been edited, as the writer points out. Well, they wouldn't do that at the major networks, would they? Well, think about the George Zimmerman 911 tape. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And as I mentioned yesterday, think about NBC's Dateline when it put a rocket under a pickup truck to blow it up so it could claim the pickup truck had a faulty gas tank. Yeah, yeah, they might. And then they accuse us of fake news. The piece also employed, the writer says, a new misleading edit in the form of Trump supporter Carl Higby appearing to argue in favor of treating Muslim Americans the same as Japanese Americans of the 1940s, which could easily be uh, be misconstrued as a call for internment camps. But in other portions not shown by CNN, the writer says, it could clearly be seen that he flatly argued against internment camps, but for a registry that would only include immigrants. Some people might say that goes too far, but we are involved, if you did not remember, in a war. The war has not ended. It continues. And to sit here and try to pretend it hasn't, there are still Americans dying on battlefields in Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Syria. So, you know, you you lefties out there who think that your guy over the last eight years restored peace to the planet, you're full of baloney. Now, someone who you would never confuse with with one of these emotionally unstable leftists is a British politician by the name of Nigel Farage, the leader of the UK Independence Party. If you don't know the history of that party, he had been a a, a very conservative uh, member, well, a conservative party in England. He'd been a member of what they call the Tories, a, a strong supporter of Margaret Thatcher. But when she was deposed, he helped found the UK Independence Party because he felt that all of the people who came after her were panty wastes in comparison to what she had been. And so he's now the long time, he's resigned a couple of times, but usually ends up back in the leadership of that party. He appeared yesterday on Neil Cavuto's program on the Fox News channel. And Farage was warning about open borders and also accepting all of those who are claiming refugee status. A refugee is a man or a woman who is in direct threat of their freedom or their life as a result of their race, their religion, or their beliefs. Now, that's fine. And I think we can, provided we have secure borders, which, of course, at the moment we don't, provided we have secure borders, 
we can find room in our hearts for genuine refugees. And I'm thinking particularly of Christians living in Syria, living in Iraq, being murdered, being persecuted, as one very good, clear example. What we cannot do, I'm afraid, and if only we could as human beings, but there are 59 million people currently displaced by war, according to the United Nations. And if Obama is suggesting uh, that we in the West can find room for all of these people, particularly given the fact that we have no means to vet whether these people have terrorist links, then there's a problem. And one quick thing, Neil. A year ago, we saw those appalling massacres taking place in restaurants and that theatre in France. Of the eight men that committed those atrocities, five of them had got into Europe, crossing the Mediterranean, posing as refugees. So I'm sorry, Obama. We need to be more careful than that. I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Obama pays no attention to what a man who's already been marginalized in his own country has to say. They can not, well, they can marginalize Farage all they want, but his ideas still carried the day with the Brexit vote there. And if you're seeing what's happening, then the Trump election, and then the uh, rejection of uh, Italy, uh, the voters there the other day, uh, the near miss in, in Austria, uh, the French president is not going to run for re-election, and it looks like the most conservative candidate, not the most nationalist, but the most conservative candidate, will be the next president. Uh, there's a writer by the name of, gosh, he's the former executive editor of the Washington Times, retired now but still writing a column, Wesley Pruden, who says Angela Merkel will make it four for four if she loses next year. And in most of these cases, polling data shows the incumbent usually winning. And in three of three of these elections now, as it turns out, the polls were wrong. So while Merkel may be leading in polls in her country at the moment, and what will happen, and I'm sure, I, I'm going to sit here and make a prediction today. You will see more of these attacks from these savages taking place in Europe. And when that happens, Merkel's stock with the, with the voters in her own country, the German voters, is going to just sag. And it's going to be a free fall when that happens. Meanwhile, I also have this. Bill O'Reilly speaking last night on his program on the Fox News Channel uh, during his, uh, his commentary was explaining that not everybody in the Western world is weak when it comes to allowing migrants into their countries. For that return to Australia, a nation of about 24 million people, but with a land mass almost exactly the same as America's. And we have... 325 million people. So there's plenty of room to roam down under. Australia has a stone cold policy on illegal entry. If you're caught, you are forcibly taken by the Aussie military to remote locations in the South Pacific where you can either sit for years or to be deported home. Australia accepts less than 15,000 migrants a year on a humanitarian basis. Recently announced it would take 12,000 Syrian refugees on top of that. But even more recently, the Obama administration said it would take more than 2,000 refugees currently languishing in the South Pacific, human beings that Australia refuses. Bill O'Reilly speaking last night on his program on the Fox News Channel. Bill Colley with you at 8.15, 17 right now. And of course, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. The show is top story. And caller, you're up next. Good morning, Bill. Uh, you don't mind if I change the subject just a little bit? I prefer not to. I've got a whole list of things I've got to get to yet today, and I don't want to go off into the weeds at any point. Well, maybe this is part of the subject because you're talking about you're talking about stuff that, that will be history, and and I'm thinking that a lot of things that happened in history, people forget. And I, I had a quiz this morning with a bunch of kids about history pertaining to Pearl Harbor, and none of them know it. And we're not, we're not teaching kids what happened in history, and someday this will be history, and nobody knows anything about it. That's very true, and I thank you for the call. It's Common Core, obviously. Well, it existed before Common Core, didn't it? It's just the educational system. When you have no discipline in the schools, you have no way of getting people to learn. Now, there's some other aspects of that involved, too. Some of the people who are actually teaching, it's like some of the deacons you usually get at church when they get up to preach, and then they go off on this monotone for 20 minutes, and you know, you're know you waiting for everyone to start snoring. 
But you're right. It, 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 we have a system right now, and we don't because we don't have a lot of high standards. You know, we just pass everybody along to get them out of the way. It's unfortunate. I want to get back to that Pearl Harbor uh, story a little bit later in the program. Related, speaking of related stories to uh, to refugee resettlement. The Daily Signal, Homeland Security's green card follies are costing taxpayers and leaving America less safe. Do you ever wonder if it's intentional? This Jay Johnson fellow who's running the Department of Homeland Security, which is also a Department of Redundancy, we already have a central intelligence agency, which is supposed to be the clearinghouse for all of these things. But Homeland Security, this guy Jay Johnson who's running the operation, I mean, he's a political hack. So... If you've got a president who who borders, at least, on treasonous activity frequently, and his minions are under his orders, then a guy like a Jay Johnson might come along and say, well, you know, we'll play fast and loose with these green cards. That way we'll get more Democrats into the country, and we'll claim later on it was just an oversight, it was a computer, or we'll fire a couple of lackey underlings and uh, blame them for the problem. The writer David and Sarah at the Daily Signal says a recent report from the Inspector General concluded that the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services mishandled thousands of green cards. The Department of Homeland Security has admitted that these green cards are missing and cannot be accounted for. Oh, thank you very much, Infidel, for the green card. Huh? Where do I find the fertilizer store? The electronic system was intended to make digitized records and allow immigrants to complete transactions electronically. Wouldn't you want to see these people in person just, oh, no, 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 uh, we we had a couple of guys from Yemen just the other day, and it was fairly simple for them. They went online, and they filled out all the paperwork, and they got their green cards, and we think they're somewhere right now in Kansas. Uh, you know, the uh, word has been that they're out there scoping a Walmart or two, but other than that, uh, no, 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 we haven't had any serious issues. It has been plagued, the writer says, by problems since its inception. The government has already sunk. $1.2 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars into the program, though it was originally estimated to cost $536 million. That's million with an M. So it's already more than double over budget. Can you imagine if we ever end up with single-payer health care? Uh, remember what they said that it would cost us for some of these other programs in the 1960s? Well, we project over the course of decades. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? We've been burned already about 6,000 times. We might start getting wise to all of this. The writer says, for all that money, the program only allows its users to complete two out of 90 transactions online. Yes, yes, yes. Your bureaucracy at work for you, uh, doing whatever it can to, uh, to bankrupt the system for its own personal benefit. We've got a guest coming up in about 15 minutes. We'll be talking some medical issues. Chip Family Medicine. It's called Better Health, in fact. That's on the way. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Oh, the recount continues, I guess, in Michigan, but there's some news there. It looks as if it could also cause Hillary Clinton's voter totals to drop dramatically. This was not what they intended. Remember, I was telling you all about uh, cold weather the last couple of days and how if you weren't ready for it, it could come back and, you know, it could bite you. Really, we're not making any of this up. I mean, you if you've stepped outside the last couple of days and, or you've heard the wind howling, you know it hasn't been the, the, the nicest weather we've had in quite some time. But that's why we've been telling you for a very, very long time that if you have trouble heating your home, you need to call the professionals at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. They'll come out and they'll they'll fix whatever troubles you have. They'll get it done right and they'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winters are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Telephone number 678-0459. That's 0459. 678-0459, Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Have you been reading about this effort? Uh, it looks like Jill Stein is, is, is just going to continue to pound away at the effort to have recounts in at least three states, although... The former Democrat National Committee chair, and uh, he's now former governor of Pennsylvania too, Ed Rendell, has already said that it's a fool's uh, fool's errand. In Detroit, Michigan, because Hillary lost Michigan by what, 11,000, 12,000 votes? A writer at the Daily Caller says over half of Detroit's 
662 voting precincts may be ineligible for the ongoing Michigan recount since the number of ballots in precinct poll books do not match those from voting machine printout reports. Gee, could it be that there were fraudulent votes cast in Detroit, a bastion of Democrat Party politics? More than a third of precincts in Wayne County, Michigan's largest county and home to Detroit, could be disqualified from the statewide recount because county officials, quote, couldn't reconcile vote totals for 610 of 1,680 precincts during a countywide canvas of vote results late last month, unquote. Uh, That's according to the Detroit News. So Hillary's totals will go down now, won't they? Oh, she will lookers. And the media says, no, there's no widespread voter fraud. You wouldn't want us to actually go out there and do our jobs and find any now, would you? I told you yesterday, liberals are so upset. They're not talking secession, uh, California especially. So Lofgren, who's a woman in comfortable shoes and a member of the House of Representatives from that state, actually spoke to Fox News about it. Coming from California, I'm mindful that the votes of my constituents count one-third as compared to a Wyoming resident. And looking ahead for the stability of our democracy, I don't think that is a sustainable uh, model. Don't let the door hit you in the backside. We have a caller with us. I'm going to call at 9 or 825, excuse me, it's 37. No, it's 17. We'll get these numbers straight. I need to do bifocals. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Well, if we don't learn from history, doomed to repeat it. You know, Islam's been declaring war on the world for world conquest for over 1,400 years. I was visiting with a friend that found out, worked with the uh, refugee center here, and they said, oh, they're just wonderful people to work with and they're really uh concerned and about you know coming to this country and so forth and but the bottom line is like pastor sharam hadian said when he spoke here two or three different times they have a lower house that they will be really good friends and uh bridget gabriel also said the same thing until Gosh, you know, what would they know? They both went through this, one of them in Beirut, Lebanon, and the other in Tehran, Iran. Yeah, and so they uh, they have been through this, and uh, when they get in the majority, the, the Muslims get in the majority, then they start killing Christians and Jews. And that same thing is going to happen right here in River City uh, if we continue allowing these people in here. Um, you know, in some neighborhoods already, they're up to close to 25%. They're going to be wanting their enclaves here fairly soon. So, you know, people are so naive. They don't study history about these people that are basically, it's a theocracy of hate and killing, really. And you've mentioned that more and more. But people that actually work there, you know, I I can see they they are good neighbors right now, and they... And I have another friend that has a neighbor that's uh, uh, from over there someplace. And But when push comes to shove, they're going to follow Allah and uh, their leaders because if they don't, they'll be killed. That's the way they work. It's quite a recruitment set situation. Proselyte, you join us or we kill you. And thank you for the call. It's a, yeah, it, it, you know, at the point of a sword was how it was done. Uh, back in the early days of the faith, and I don't think a whole lot's changed since it's a, it's a faith that has been regressing, if you will, back to a period of about 700 to uh, 1,400 years ago. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. But, you know, as one of those trustees said over at the Refugee Center, uh, CSI rather, which controls the Refugee Center, yeah, but, you know, all of these newcomers, I've got such great restaurants to choose from now. Mmm. Yeah, see, now I can go out and get baklava whenever I want it. I don't really care that anybody dies. I mean, you know, gosh, but that's really good food, you know, great dessert. (sighs) All right, hey, got a quick note. We've got a medical discussion on the way in a few minutes. Uh, That'll be Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. We'll do that between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. More coming up following 9 o'clock news, of course. They mentioned some thoughts about Pearl Harbor and some other cultural issues we've got going on. Also, test scores in this country continue to plummet. Uh, that may go back to our previous caller talking about the, uh, the Nimrods we're teaching in schools uh, who don't know any history. Quickly, if you're not listening to this program, you should be. 
If you're having difficulty listening to it, you need to get in touch with my friend, Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. She'd like to open your new world or your world to new sounds. Well, it would be a new world in many ways then, and experiences. A new hearing device is available, which works with the brain to help those with hearing loss hear more naturally than any previous aid on the market. She's offering a two-week free trial. Call today to schedule your personal fitting appointment. Open your world to better hearing. Call Dr. Pickup at Mount Harrison Audiology, 312-0957. That's 312-0957. It's 830, and it's 17. Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com.